Hey friend, and welcome to another episode of Faith and Friends. Okay, so before we get into this episode, this is just for y'all on YouTube. I just wanted to give you a little something special. Hi! So this is for you, friend. Okay, so this study is so special to me. The Anxious Study, we're talking with the author today of this study, and let me tell you, for such a time as this, this study has been published. Oh my goodness, this world is crazy. There's so much going on, and I don't know about you, but there's a lot going on in my life. I have a lot of people that I love in the hospital. I have a lot of people that I love having to navigate really hard seasons, like things that are just unimaginable to me. But man, I have so much peace because of the Word of God. And man, this study's been so cool. So I just wanted to tell you that before we got into the episode. This episode's very chill and uh, it's just in Zoom format. So it's just like you're joining us on a Zoom call, which I love because that's how it is. We're just two friends hanging out. So I love you and I pray this episode truly does encourage you in your walk knowing that there's many things in this world to be anxious about, but there's one reason not to be, and his name is Jesus. So enjoy! Scarlet's the best! Hey y'all, and welcome back to another episode of Faith and Friends. I'm like actually super hyped because today we're talking to our sweet sister Scarlet, and I'm going to ask her how to say her last name because... I don't want to butcher it, but Scarlett is the author of the new Lifeway study that I'm currently doing, and I would love for you to join me along. It is called Anxious, Fighting Anxiety with the Word of God. So Scarlett, thanks for hanging out with us today. Georgia, I've known you for like three minutes, and I just love you. You're so you're so sweet and wonderful. Girl, I'm so happy to be here. I love you. So thank you for making time for us. Of course. So tell me, before we really get going to be actual friends, I need to know like how to say your last name. Can I tell you my actual friends? Many of them still can't say it. So don't, so no worries. Perfect. <laughs> it's um, Hiltabidal. Hiltabidal. That's it's beautiful. my husband's fault. Oh, thank you. <laughs> we love him. We love him enough to take that last name. Exactly. Yes. That's he's, so he's pretty awesome. great. That's wonderful. How long have y'all been married? Oh my goodness. I'm old, Georgia. Um, 15 years in November. Oh. That's amazing. I know. Okay, y'all better celebrate. I got celebrate. married when I was 20 years old. So there you go. Younger than me. Yeah, I was a little tiny baby. Wow. <laughs> but it was, it was a good decision. <laughs> yes, and so y'all basically got to grow up together. We did. We were, yeah. I mean, I joke around. He He's like, his hair is like swooped into like a professional. He's 39 now. Um, you like people who didn't know him then would never believe me, but he had like long hair and a guitar pick necklace. And I was like a punk with like black hair and like a stripe that was red in the front that I did myself. And, you know, yeah, we totally grew up together. It was, it was fun. I kind of love it. Your kids are going <laughs> to cherish those pictures. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my word. Okay. So I did a little research cause I'm going to be honest. Okay. This was me this morning. I was trying to figure out how to say your last name correctly. I'm not oh, even goodness. kidding. This was me this morning. I was like, oh, I just love her. And I don't want to like be disrespectful of my friend. Oh, please. You're so, so, sweet. <laughs> so I literally, I was looking at Jamie Ivy's podcast that cause y'all did an episode together Yeah. and I only got to listen to a few, a few minutes of it. But what I heard is that you and your husband adopted we did. We did and, in 2017. Wow. And so she is deaf. Did Dude, I read that correctly? Yeah. Well, she's a miracle. Correctly? She's very special. Oh yes. my gosh, tell um, me, tell me, tell me. Okay. So, so we, I have two biological daughters and uh -huh. they're like the bookends. So my oldest and my youngest are uh -huh. biological and we adopted joy when she was almost four. It was a total God led us to this specific special need and this specific girl. And she's just incredible, but yeah, she was born with no outer or middle ears. Um, mm -hmm. and all we knew, we knew she couldn't walk, um, wasn't potty trained almost for no sign language, no nothing. And it was just, God made it so clear. It's a really long story, but he made it so clear that she was going to be in our family. And so it was an 11 month process and we all learned sign language and this really sweet interpreting service gifted us with six months of one-on-one -on -one tutoring. Wow. And so we did all that. And then we met her and it was like, the saddest, scariest thing ever, because of course we hoped for healing and that she'd be okay. And that she'd learn this sign language and that she'd learn the gospel and sign language, you know, all this stuff. And she just was so medically not okay when we met her, but mm -hmm. fast forward, um, you know, food and love and the healing of Jesus. She is 
Um, so she has ears now that Vanderbilt over in Vanderbilt. Tennessee, um, Vanderbilt. So they made her ears, they printed ears for her and covered them in her own skin. It was five surgeries last year. Um, and she has a hearing aid that sticks into a screw in her skull. She can hear and understand English. We're all fluent in sign language ish. If I meet a real, an actual deaf person, I feel like I don't know anything, but we can <laughs> communicate in sign language and she can hear us and understand English. And she's starting to, I mean, she verbalizes pretty okay. Like we understand what she's saying. A lot of people understand a lot of what she's saying. And um, I mean, she's just super smart, super sweet. We named her Joy. She's super joyful. And she's just a gift to everyone who knows her. So Wow. God does really cool things. <laughs> yeah, he does. And I just am so grateful that y'all had your yes on the table. You were obedient and you said, that's our girl. Like that's man, amazing. You, you know, we tell people, I love that you said yes on the table because it was like, you know how we describe it is like our not no was on the table. It was like, mm. it was so like outside of anything I would have ever imagined walking into. And it was like, we knew God was telling us to pursue her, but it was also like a scary thing to walk into. And so the whole, like every step of the way, we're just like, we are not supposed to say no to this up until, you know, pretty close to when we met her and, and man, it really is cool. Like we didn't do anything special. We just didn't say no, that's all, you right. know, and God did this amazing thing. And she's so, she's so precious. So, yeah. And oh my <laughs> goodness. And your world was opened up to even the gospel in a new way. Oh yeah. That you'd really never probably thought of before. Oh my goodness. No, I don't even think we had met a deaf person and just getting to like be involved in that community. Um, back when we lived in Nashville, now we live in Southern California and it's, we're very new here. So we haven't really connected very much yet, but, um, yeah, it's really, it's been really special. And just to see like the testimony of my little eight-year-old, she's eight now, um, joy, like she doesn't even have to do anything, but exist. And she's a walking, you know, story of God's faithfulness and healing and power. And I didn't see that coming. Like when we brought her home, it was like, okay, I don't even have to try to like manufacture, uh, you know, as a Christian, you want to share Jesus with people, but it can often be like scary and awkward. And it's not because it's like, how do you tell this girl's story without talking about God, you know? Literally. So that's been the coolest thing. And even when she couldn't hear before the, these amazing surgeries, like yeah. you got to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And she got to see that, like, like that's amazing. You know, what's amazing is that it sounds like a scary thing, but I have never been more peaceful in my life than in mm. that season when it was so, um, when we had no idea, like, will she ever learn sign language? Will she ever heal? Like that season that should have been the scariest because of the Lord was like the sweetest season because we had to be so dependent every day, you know? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> that's, that's amazing. And, you know, I, I think it really stuck out to me when I like barely heard those five seconds in your other <laughs> episode was because I, hello, hello, my friend. <laughs> I was born um, and I want to speak life over it. I was born not being able to hear out of my right ear. And so mm. I'm declaring that it is healing in Jesus name. Mm. And so hearing that I felt kind of connected to how you were mm. just meeting her right there and doing everything that you needed to do for your girl and declaring victory over her. And I just thought that was awesome because there are a lot of things in this world to be anxious about. There are a lot of things yep. <laughs> that are scary. And Scarlett, we just started this with my group, my little ladies uh -huh. here in town. And I'm like trying to lead our little group and I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I'm like, <laughs> well, just, just show up and the Holy Spirit will fall. So yeah, we were reading, you know, on like page eight, your introduction, you were like, the world is full of insufficient solutions to our anxiety. And there's like, food, clothes. Mm. And I was like, Ooh, conviction. And <laughs> keep going. And then there's a blank. And I said blank. And my sweet sister, Cindy to my left goes 2020 pandemic masks, vaccines, da -da -da, oh, da -da -da, staying, staying at home, going out <laughs> all these things. And I was like, Oh, you're right. Yep. That that's a lot. Yep. And I kind of sat in it for one mm. of the first times. And so this study is very timely. Were you writing mm. this in 2020? Like, 
Like, how did God I, bring you to, to this? Yeah, man. So it's so funny because like anxiety is, it's been like the fight of my life. Mm. And so it's funny because when 2020 was happening, I think I was writing it 2019 and 2020. Wow. Was that true? I think so. But it's like, I have had to learn, um, because this is such a major mental battle in my mind still, um, I've had to learn how to fight it with the word of God. And so when 2020 was happening, people were reaching it. My first book's called afraid of all the things. And it's like, it was, it's a book, not a Bible study, but it's like my testimony of, I wouldn't even, I would call it freedom from being a slave to my fears because mm -hmm. I still struggle. Um, I'm not one of these that's like, here's how I've done it. And so can you, and now I'm perfect and always healthy and everything's good now. No, like, um, I I'm definitely dependent on the Lord every day, you know, and I, as, as we need to be, because if I felt like I had it all together, then I would not see my need for Jesus, even though I always have a need for Jesus. Anyway, I'm getting off on a tangent. All that to say, people reached out to me when 2020 was happening. Like you're the anxiety person. Like, how are you doing? You know? And it's so, it's like, I was so grateful that the Lord had already shown me how the gospel speaks into ev all the scary stuff that there is to be scared of. He'd already shown me that. And so I've already been living a lifestyle of speaking the truth into my mind, uh, you know, <laughs> believing and doing the daily work of like having a relationship with Jesus, because that's the only thing that brings peace. It is. It's the only thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've had my moments. Meanwhile, like I had all this health stuff going on. I had my mm. thyroid taken out. And mm. so it was like personally and in the world, there was so much going on, but I was already in that battle. You know what I mean? So like, yeah, yeah it is so timely. And it's, it's also funny because it's like, yeah, I was writing about anxiety and doing all this since 2017. <laughs> you know? So this is just my fight. So yeah. I mean, what a crazy, crazy time. It's like all these things I've been scared of my whole life are happening. <laughs> it's like, huh. And Jesus is enough. He really is. And the Bible yeah. is true and he's with us. So yeah, you're right. And, and let me ask you when you're in the thick of like your own health stuff and mm -hmm. then the world is kind of like crashing and burning, mm -hmm. literally burning. <laughs> and there's <laughs> yep. so much going on and it seems so loud. Was there ever moments I have felt like this where it's like, oh, well, what I'm going through is nothing compared to what the world has going on. So I just don't need to worry about me or I just mm -hmm. need to fix on everybody else's problems. So then I don't have to deal with my own. Have you yeah. ever been there? And if you have, like, what have you done? Obviously the answer is mm -hmm. Jesus, but how is that right. applicable? in that, that stuff? That's a great question. Um, you know, I think anxiety is such an in your own head thing, mm -hmm. or I know it is, it's such an in your own head thing. So it's like, I feel like when I have been struggling with anxiety the most, it's like I'm trapped in my own mind and I can't get out of it. So whatever problem I'm stressed about, maybe it's something huge. More often it's tiny hypothetical things. Like it might, what if this person that I love and respect says this to me? And then I say this, and what if they have this expectation? And I don't, you know, those are the things that like trap me um, more than the big stuff. I think that's pretty common people I've talked to. Yeah. Um, but man, and I also think we're living in this time when we can see so much suffering all over the world. Just like you said, it's like, I had a death in my family two weeks ago and mm. now you turn on the news and it's like, there's just so much pain overseas in our own country, in my own family. And it's like, how are we supposed to live? And you're right. The answer is Jesus, but like practically how do, <laughs> what do you do with all this? And like my big thing that I love to tell people, and this is not wisdom from my brain. It's wisdom. I was grateful enough to like be in the same room with an older, wiser woman. And I'm so grateful that I was in the room with her when I was, um, 20, three or whatever. Wow. Um, she just kind of presented the gospel to me. And I, I grew up learning the gospel. I grew up in a Christian home. Um, I knew it, I believed it, but I lived with so much fear and so much panic. And I was like, why do Christian, what, you know, Christians are supposed to be joyful and peaceful. Why am I not that? Why do I struggle so much? What is wrong with me? Um, and I had my first baby who's now 10. <laughs> um, and I was balancing her at this 
retreat where I wasn't supposed to have my baby, but I was too scared to leave her at home because I was scared of everything. And um, this mom was just like talking about her own home and how she lived the gospel out in her home and her parenting and her marriage. And she just basically said, my goal is not to be the perfect everything. My goal is to just point up, like, I'm going to fail. I, it's just going to happen. So when I fail my family, I apologize to my kids, to my husband, I repent. I show them what it looks like to pray a prayer of repentance by doing it in front of them. I don't hide my sin and my faults and pretend to have it together in front of my family. And I was just like, I mean, I still get chills right now. I've said this story a gazillion times last few years. I still get chills because it's like that had not clicked for me. And I was in this phase of my life where I was trying so hard to be a good mom and have a healthy baby and do everything right. And I felt either like, oh, I'm doing great because of this checklist of things that I feel like I'm doing right. Um, or I'd be a failure because I wasn't doing good at those things. And it was like, that kind of just freed me to live differently. Like, oh, okay, I'm going to have good days. I'm going to have bad days. But if I'm pursuing the Lord, if I'm like putting the, his word in front of my face and praying and being obedient, living in community, um, instead of hiding in my, with my fear, which is my tendency, then I can actually be free because when I fail, I don't have to despair. I can be like, I failed you guys. Thank goodness for Jesus. And it was like, that changed my entire life. That, that is what has changed my life. And that is what I tell myself when I'm dealing with personal stuff. And that's what I tell myself when I'm watching the news, which I try not to do too much yep. of because, oh my yep. gosh. Um, yeah, it's, it's all <laughs> too much. And yeah, you know, we need each other and we need Jesus. Wow. The end, <laughs> the end, end of story. Mic drop. <laughs> no, Mic it's drop. true. And that's something else. I'm, well, first, let me say this. Yes. There's so much freedom in that. Like you are an amazing mama. It's, it's just a testimony of where your heart's at and how you love your babies and they're getting bigger. And it's like, Oh, and you're celebrating 15 years. Like that's amazing. And that's a testimony of the Lord right there. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Like keeping those tiny humans alive. Like you're doing the dang thing. Like that is one good thing. Like if nothing else (laughs) happens today, like there's food in their belly and you know, a smile on their face. And so There's so much freedom in that because we don't have to have it all together. And so thank you for leading that example of saying we don't have to have it all together. That's what I'm getting. I'm only like day four into this Mm -hmm. study, but (laughs) even just your writing style, like everything in the little quotes and like the parentheses. And (laughs) I feel like even before we got to hop on this call together, that like you're with us, like you're a sister, you're a friend to those who need one. You're like, me too. I've been there. I'm going through it. We're going to walk through it together. We're not going to bounce around the hard questions. I'm not going to go hide in my closet. Like you <laughs> talked about. So sister, you're living this out. Like it's, oh, man. It, it's amazing. And my group of ladies, like we're needing this. And even a friend saw the cover today and I didn't even notice this, but the end of the pin is even <laughs> chewed. <laughs> yeah. Like every detail into this study was was seen. And I love that. And so I'm really grateful how you're going back and forth from the Psalms. This first week is on David. And, and so, wow, I'm just, I'm loving it. What was your favorite part of, of writing it? What was the most freeing to you? First of all, thank you, Georgia. That is so sweet to hear and so encouraging to me because, and I hope this is encouraging to you and your listeners, but it's like, we all know ourselves, right? So it's like, we know the thoughts we have and the struggles we have more than anyone else Mm. does. And it's so easy to believe the lie, like, well, I'm not qualified to serve God because I struggle. And so, I mean, even the conversation of like that subtitle of anxious fighting anxiety with the word of God, like someone at the round table, very wise, wonderful, godly person was like, how about overcoming? And I was like, well, I have not overcome. (laughs) Like I would Mm. not consider myself a peaceful person. I definitely um, enjoy the peace that surpasses all understanding when I am walking with the Lord, definitely. Um, But sometimes I still, I have to fight. It's a fight every day, all the time. So like that was intentional. And I'm so glad that you feel that, that you feel that I'm walking this with you because, oh my goodness, I am. And, (laughs) you know, um, anyway, so thank you. And then second, you said, what 
in writing the study? What did you ask me? What, yeah, did I, what, what was, was your favorite what part or like, favorite? yes, or the most freeing, okay. like already the yes. Psalms are so good. I, I guess it was like Psalm 61 today. I was like, Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. like it's just so good. Uh, well, okay. So writing a Bible study was so different than writing books mm. because books, like I've always loved writing just as like my hobby. I was with someone from church today having coffee and they're like, what do you do for fun? And I was like, nothing. I'm a homebody. And I just, I've mm. always loved just like writing. Like that's my, that's always been my hobby. Um, but writing books is like this cathartic, like fun thing for me. This was like, I felt like a college student again, like studying and reading commentaries and, um, man, what was my favorite part of it? It was so like the first part of the study. So you said you're in the first part of it. I look Mm -hmm. every section is like different people in the Bible, the scary things they went through, um, what we can learn from their faith and what we can learn from their failures, because they're all humans. And that was a a good thing for me to remember. I feel like those of us who are very church who grew up in Sunday school, you know, we learn about David when he, you know, killed Goliath. And we kind of look at him as this hero that we should emulate but the hero is not David. David was a murderer and an adulterer and to help. I mean, yes, he was a man after God's own heart, but he had huge, horrible failures in his life. And so that's comforting to me. Um, it was super comforting, excuse me, to look at these people and see like, oh, they were fearful. Moses, you know, he was super fearful about what God called him to do. Jonah, you know, like all these things, if you read through them and study them rather than just looking at the highlights of their life, the Instagram reel of their life, you know, um, there are people just like us. And just like I said, it's like, God uses us regular, um, struggling humans. And so that was super encouraging. And then, um, this back half of the study is like looking at prayer and, um, Bible reading and living in community, which is so important for anxious people, which I feel like we all now 2021, we all know what anxiety feels like, even if we didn't before. Mm -hmm. Um, But like, it was just, it was really special and sweet for me to get to just deeply look at the, into the Bible and just remind myself and hopefully remind you guys who are doing the study that like, we don't use the Bible to get to be better versions of ourselves. God will transform us into his image more, the more we spend time with him. But it's not like a prescription we're picking up, like, okay, I'm going to read my Bible and then I'm going to get the things that I can feel better. It's just like, knowing God and experiencing him in his word is the thing that brings peace because he's so good. And we were created to have that relationship with him. So it was just like, as I was walking through the scariness of 2020 and my own stuff in my life, yeah, it was so comforting to get to study that and think about people like you and think about people like the people you're leading and like, okay, like, this is what it's all about. We were made for this and looking at our own weaknesses and failures in light of what God's word says about our future. And it's just the best. So I don't know. I learned a ton putting it together. Yeah. That's amazing. And I'm learning a ton on day four. I love so glad oh, girl, me too. Like, it's so fun. And this is the first study I've done in a while. Like for a while, I really just like, I was really struggling, like finishing college and like moving and all the things like I didn't walk for graduation. So I had to like grieve that and grieve oh. not finishing college. Like kind of without the pandemic, you know what I mean? Like it wasn't normal. And so all I really listened to was the Bible for a long time. Yeah. Which, you know, that's fine. That's perfectly normal, (laughs) but it was hard. And so having this as the first study to pick back up is like, this is right where I need to be. And I have a lot of friends starting school this next week and just different things that I'm like, okay, I need to order you a copy. So this is awesome. And I just loved that whatever day that I read today, oh, I guess it was day three, where you were talking about prayer and having to pray in a group and how at, at the beginning, like you're, you're not trying to be rude or anything, but that's just not your favorite thing to do. <laughs> yeah. So to our friend that does not like praying in public mm-hmm. from one friend to another, what would you say to them? <laughs> Um, I'm trying to remember the day you're talking about. I know I told a story in there somewhere about when I was a church secretary and I was like yes. 19 or 20. It's this story. And I was like, yes. And I was like, okay, uh, what can I say that will make the people around me be like, mm, yes, Lord. Like I was like, so mm, hallelujah. On, yes. yes. Like I want the other people to approve of the spiritual state 
of me and am I spiritual? It was like all about me and how I was presenting myself and how I looked. It was not about, I'm going to talk to God and, you know, get to connect with him and get to pray for the people in the room with me. It was not that at all. Mm. Um, man, I would say I, it's, it's uncomfortable praying. I mean, in public, I think that the, the deeper you get into your relationship with the Lord, um, and the more you experience the love of others, like the real, like, wow, that person is loving me with a love that is not a human love. That's like a supernatural love. Like you experience that. I've had people in my life who gave me that before I knew what it looked like. Mm. And it's the thing that changes you. It's like, oh, I can pray for this person. And that's not nothing because I'm talking to the God who created both of us and who is sovereign over this whole situation. And things change (laughs) when we pray, you know, Mm. and if we pray and if we keep track of our prayers, even the little ones, like I used to probably have a cynical bent. I probably still struggle or will struggle with it again. But like, you know, you'd see the grannies who are like, I prayed, I'd find my keys and I found them. And I'd be like, okay though. And like, I wouldn't take stuff to God that was little feeling, but then I learned like, no, he cares about that. Like he cares about all those little things because when we pray about finding our keys and pray about everything, it's, it's building our faith because we're seeing that God is in all the details and he is. And so like for the sister who struggles to pray in public, I would just say, ask the Lord to help you think of the people around you and how you can serve them. Because Mm -hmm. that, that was a huge thing for me, like getting out of, and still is like getting out of my own, how am I going to appear in front of these people thing? And just being like, how can I serve this person? Because man, it is so good to be loved by another believer who, you know, sacrificially is taking your problem before God and, Mm. um, and, and tell, you know, checking in with you, excuse me, saying, Hey, I'm praying about this thing. What's the update? Mm. Like, have you, you know, how loved does that make you? It makes me feel so loved. And so the fact that we can be that no matter how old we are, you know, we can be that for other people is such a gift. So Mm. I would just say, pray that God helps you you know, every day get into that mindset. Yeah. It it takes the fear away. (laughs) Yes. No, that's so good because at the end of the day, he uses us, but it's not about us yet. It is all about us because he needs to use us on behalf of other people to intercede. And he knows everything. He sees it all. But when he sees his sons and daughters asking and knocking and seeking him, like it changes everything. Yeah. Like it's so amazing. So that was so good. And I used to not really like to pray in public. I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be like, Hey, everybody, let, let, I'm going to pray now. Like, right. No, but I feel like the more that I've been doing it, I'm dating the sweetest boy, Scarlett. Oh, I want to hear about this. (laughs) This Oh my God. His name is Marshall. Marshall. We love him. So cute together. Thank you. It's almost been a year. Wow. We love. Oh my goodness. So it's been sweet. And honestly, I've been more confident in my praying out loud because he'll pray like for me and we'll pray together, which that's a whole nother topic of, you know, praying Hmm. in a relationship. And I'm just learning so much. There's always so much (laughs) to learn, but I feel like for me, the more that I've been doing it, the more I have confidence in talking to him and just having an example, like, like Marshall or your friends or your small group, safe environments to cultivate that prayer life is really helpful. So right on sister, right on. That's so true. So Hmm. about the whole like dating thing. And now you're going to be married for 15 years. So (laughs) you know a thing or two. What is it like on those days where you're like, really struggling in your head and like wanting to bring your man into that? because we got to bring all the things in the dark into the light. What does it look yes. like for y'all to love each other? Cause I know I could learn a lot there. Oh, wow. That's such a good question. You're good at this, Georgia. Has anybody told you that you're good at this? You're so sweet. It is all the <laughs> um, Lord. <laughs> yes. Um, man, marriage is such a beautiful picture of, um, of the gospel. Mm. It is like, I look back so I was so, I, like I said, I was a tiny little baby when I got married. Brandon's four years older than I am. So I was 20, he was 24 and we did not know how to love each other <laughs> very well. We, um, 
I met him at church. Um, he was singing on the stage about Jesus and he would cry when he prayed. And I'm like, okay, I want that. Um, <laughs> I want a man Sweet. who is like that, but we were so young and we were both, you just said it, you said, bring things into the light. We both were hiding, you know, our struggles because yeah. we both wanted to present ourselves like all dating people. You want to oh, present yeah. the best version of yourself, like all humans ever to any relationship. Yeah. Um, at but, any point in time. <laughs> exactly. Um, but we were not being obedient, um, to the Lord in bringing our sin and our struggles into the light in our own relationship. And so we definitely struggled. And when it comes, you know, your question, like how on the days I would struggle, like I would hide and I would try to be the dream girl <laughs> instead of humbling myself before God, humbling myself before my husband, before people in my community to actually find victory and freedom from the things I was struggling with. Um, and same for him. Honestly, I wouldn't say we had like a best friendship marriage. We were best friends before we got married, but we didn't have the marriage we enjoy now until man, like five, six years in when we finally were like, okay, we're going to lay this all out on the table. <laughs> we are going mm -hmm. to actually share the stuff that one of my old pastors used to call like below the line of shame. Like we're not going to dance right up close to it and kind of share our struggles and be like, oh, this one time I struggled with this. No, we're going to be like, this is who I am. And this is what I'm doing. And this time I'm struggling. And that transformed our marriage. And so, mm. you know, we have learned over the years how to love each other. Well, you know, we've both had to kind of help each other there because we're two different humans from two very different families. And, um, you know, now I'm sure that I hope in 15 more years, we're like, man, what did we know back then? <laughs> but, um, you know, as the Lord continues to grow us, um, to be more like him, but you know, it's just like the way we'd handle conflict and pain and sin back then is so different than how we do it. Now we have so much openness. Um, and that's just a huge part of how we've always, we've always been open, but getting to that level of openness where like, no, we're going to recognize that neither one of us is perfect. And so that was just huge. I would just say as you're dating, um, and walking into marriage and, you know, just, and friendships and all, ooh. <laughs> I don't know. Your listeners can't see your happy dance. <laughs> I'm like doing a little bounce. We're just doing a happy dance. Um, as you walk into those things that are such a gift from the Lord, you would think like, oh, if he knows the ugly stuff, it's going to be worse, but it's the opposite. Mm -hmm. You know, the kingdom of God is like opposite of what our human minds think. That's so good. It's all opposite. It's like, no, when you humble yourself and when you expose the, the ugly stuff, you get this closeness and like the romance and the, you know, the feelings that we all want in, in that, in the romantic relationships, it gets better when yeah. you do that despite what your mind, like my mind was like, if I really share my struggles, he will reject me. He will not love me as much. And the opposite happened. Yeah. So it's like, it's, it's real. It's the power of God. And that's my biggest advice is, is be real, be open. Like you said, bring it into the light, bring whatever it is into the light, do these Bible studies with your community, confess sin, yeah. uh, do what the Bible says. And man, he's so merciful. And he's so good and marriage is the best. And I, I'm so excited for you. <laughs> Thanks girl. I'm excited too. He's wonderful. <laughs> but basically what I'm hearing and like, it's, there's so much freedom in this is that the dream girl and the dream guy mm -hmm. is the one who walks in the light. Yes. And yep. And you know what? Like I was talking to someone last week on the podcast and she was like, you know, everyone wants to marry John Piper, but John Piper was not John Piper at 20. Like, like you're, sure you're not going to find some 70 year old man. Like, like, you know, and so where, where can you in your season walk in the light and bring other people into those dark places, like in your community? And so that's, mm -hmm. that's really good. And so, because I feel like I have so much to learn, especially with dating of like bringing this to someone and it, there's so much trust and like vulnerability in that. Yeah. And that really does relate to our relationship with the Lord mm -hmm. and bringing him to that. Do you feel like it's easier for you, Scarlett, to talk to the Lord about these things or talk to your husband or your friends or your small group? Wow. Hmm. Um, well, 
before I answer that question, you made me think of this and I want to say it just to you, you youngers. Yes, tell <laughs> us, give us your youth. wisdom. Here's my wisdom. Um, <laughs> so when I was your age, I just remember I wanted to walk in the light. So I would kind of walk in the light, which mm -hmm. is not walking in the light. And so, you know, like I, I've talked about this, written about this, but I struggled with eating disorders when I was like in college. In, yeah. Like my college years. And it was like my secret, sinful, dark thing that I would hide. And I wanted to appear, I wanted to be pure and good, but I couldn't figure out how to. So mm -hmm. I would, I would share, like, I remember when I was dating my husband, I was like, yeah, I did. I was bulimic once, but I really was at, in that moment mm -hmm. <laughs> or like yesterday. So it's like, I just want whoever's listening to hear, like, if you just share what you think is like palatable, like, okay, I'll share enough to be a human mm. or I'll share enough to feel like I'm checking the box of living in the light, but I'm not really going to share all of it. It doesn't work. Like I couldn't find freedom until I really humbled myself and said, okay, I've got to stop, um, <laughs> like putting myself on this pedestal. Like I'm going to I'm going to figure out my issues and then this will be a testimony that I can tell when I'm old, <laughs> you know, no, like we have to, you, okay. So getting to your question, what's easier for me? Um, I think at this point in my life, man, it's so hard because prayer is hard. Prayer is hard. It's hard to, um, to be faithful and consistent with someone you can't see. I think for people who mm. like are verbal processors, like I am like, I like want to say it to get it out. It's easier to like see a human face <laughs> and talk to it than to pray. So like I used to struggle. I still struggle sometimes with prayer. Um, I think I don't, I don't really know what my answer is. I think it's always a battle because we're always, we have an enemy who wants us to believe lies. So, mm -hmm. you know, once we get to a certain point in our faith, we might think, okay, well, I've overcome all this stuff. And so, and I have brought my sin into the light. So now I'm good. Right. And we want to be, of course, we all want to be good. I want to be a good mom, good wife, good friend. Um, but the reality is I'm going to fail again, you know? Mm -hmm. And so like, I think the whole key is just walking humbly every day. And yeah, I don't know what my answer is as far as like, what's harder or easier. I think it's always hard to humble yourself because That's none good. of us want to admit that we're struggling. We all want to be on the other side of the struggling <laughs> before we admit it, you know? Right. Um, but how freeing is it when you're in a room with someone and they share something and you're like, Oh, you too. <laughs> you know, I'm and not then weird. You, yes. It gives you the courage to share your own struggles. And then you actually feel loved because you're like, Oh, if they can say that, then I can say this. And if I can say this and I'm yeah. still loved, then I can feel, I can be free, you know? Yeah. That's so. so good. That's so good. And, and that's really a lot of what this study is, is even in the videos. I love that. Isn't this Lifeway's first study with the videos? It's the first study where, yes, where you have a code and you have access to all the videos if you get the book. Yes. Okay. So y'all listen in friends, <laughs> do not walk, run to order <laughs> this, this, uh, the study, because at the back, yes, we've started the videos and I love it because even if one of the girls in the group is like not here for a week, it's okay because yep. she can go online, watch her videos and get to see your beautiful self on that couch, just living oh your best life. <laughs> and, oh, I, I just love it. And I just always want to be the friend who leads with vulnerability. Maybe not yes. like you know, meeting someone in five minutes and being like, this is my deepest, darkest sin. This is the worst thing I've ever done. Like, no, that could be scary. Yes. <laughs> that could be really scary. You got to um, learn to rein that in. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But opening up enough and not holding back because we don't want to be, you know, the dream yeah. friend or we want to be real. And so and knowing who you can share that stuff with, that's another thing. It's like, you're right. You don't want to be like, hi, nice to meet you. Here's all the dark stuff, but knowing like, okay, this person's also um, walking with the Lord and I trust this person and I'm going to let this person in. Um, and I'm gonna let this person hold me accountable. You know? Yeah. Yes. That's a whole mm -hmm. thing to learn too. No, that's, <laughs> that's so good because you know, we really got to watch who's speaking into our life. Definitely. Yeah, no, that's so good. And so that's why we got to center ourselves on the word of God, because when people try to speak in or the enemy or whatever is coming at us, the news media, anything, <laughs> yeah. we can, we can remember, okay, this is truth. 
Yep. This is what my God says about me. You know, you also struggle with that. Here's what I've found. Yeah. Like that, that's so good. So literally like, I'm just so happy to be your friend and to know that <laughs> the best. I'm not alone and none of our friends yeah, that are really. listening are alone. And I just think you're a really awesome woman of God and yeah. I'm not a mama or a wife yet, but as I look at your life and it's only been a, like a five minute glimpse, but <laughs> it's, it's been beautiful and real and I'm inspired. And oh. when y'all ever come back to Tennessee, I would love to hang out. <laughs> oh, I would love that. You are so sweet. Praise God for that. Because I never want to be like, oh, you know, like sometimes you see older people or like when I was your age and I would see kind of world weary older people that are just like, oh, you know, you can sometimes see this hopelessness or like, you know, like I never want to be that when I say, oh, I haven't overcome you know, my struggles, because I would, I would say I've definitely, I mean, there's all these layers that we overcome as believers. So it's like, I have overcome the eating disorders. Praise the Lord. He healed me from that. But you know, we're all these, a work in progress, but I I do hope that, you know, I'm to this age now where it's like, I'm not the young person anymore. It's so strange. And I see these younger people like you, and it makes me so happy because you are so full of joy and you are, desiring to pursue the only thing that's going to give you real peace and joy. And it's so exciting for me. Like I have daughters now and my oldest is 10 and, you know, she's entering into that fate, like preteen years. And I'm just like, man, I I so want to be like my grandma Marlene, who is 88 now. And she always was like joyful and peaceful. And I learned so much from her prayers because like she would pray things. She's had some strokes and stuff now, Mm -hmm. but the, before all that, she would pray these prayers as an 80 something widow where she'd be like, uh, she said once, Lord, help us um, to have joy and peace because that's our testimony. And I thought about her and how she, her mm. life is like getting the mail from the mailman, you know, like that's her life now. Like you are like with people all the time and, you know, school work and like, and I'm with people and I'm, we're in such a different phase of life than an 88 year old. But the fact that she gets it and that she has lived all this life with the Lord and that she's praying that the mailman can see Jesus in the joy and peace she has when she says, thank you for my mail. I'm like, man, you know, so thank you for that encouragement (laughs) and what a gift that God uses, uses us to encourage Mm -hmm. one another. He's using you to encourage me. And I hope he's using me to encourage you. And yes. And I pray that this conversation (laughs) encourages all our friends. And even in this study each week, you picked one of these, well, God highlighted to you, the people to share with us that to encourage us, they're human, just like us. And and I'm just so grateful. Like I could go for a really good cry session right now. Like this is just so beautiful. (laughs) Like this is like great. Like I'm so here for this. And so thank you for joining us. Where can people find you, find the study? Also, I just want to say this before. Girl, I read your book. Um, he numbered the pores on my face. Did you? Yes. <laughs> I remember. It was like a year and a half ago. It was before like the craziness of the world. I remember I I, so I hosted the Lifeway Girls Conference a couple years ago. Oh, how fun. It was so fun. And they gave me a little goodie bag and you're oh. in it. And oh. I <laughs> And just sitting on my bed in my little apartment in college <laughs> reading your book. And I was like, this is amazing. So another plug, oh. if they haven't read your book, isn't it? He numbered the pores on my face. Yes. He numbered the pores on my face. Yes. Go did you have a hottie list? list like I did? A hottie list? Uh, yeah. I had many journals. <laughs> I still have many journals. Uh, yeah. I had a hottie list. That, that book starts with me talking about my hottie list under my bed that my dad found. Yeah, It's very embarrassing. Yeah. Anyway, we you're so it. sweet. Girl, I love you. And so where is <sighs> the study? And um, where, where where can they find you on the internet? Okay. On the internet, I like to hang on Instagram. That's my choice place. Um, <laughs> it's just my name, Scarlet Hilta Vital. Good luck spelling. <laughs> um, my website is afraidofallthethings.com. Um, that's it. the easiest because Hilta Vital is so hard to spell. <laughs> um, the study, lifeway.com slash anxious. But you can, if you go to afraidofallthethings.com, all my stuff is there. That's probably the easiest. Um, 
Yeah, I'm not good at Twitter, so don't don't find me there. <laughs> it's okay. I go on there and I'm like, how do I say something in one sentence? I don't know. I'm just going to look at what other people are saying. Girl, you're so. fine. No one's really on Twitter much anymore. Right? You're right. Okay. You're right where you're supposed to be. Instagram, right. let's Instagram's hang out. right where I should be. <laughs> yes, I love it. My zone. Well, yeah. I love you. And I love you too. all this happened because she answered my DM and I was really grateful. So we we, we both hang out on Instagram. So just come yeah. find us. Let's talk. Let's be us. friends. Hang with us on Insta. Yes. <laughs> You're the best, Georgia. Love it. You're the best. Thank you. And Faith and Friends, I love y'all. Don't forget, there is a song on your heart. Only you can sing. Your voice is important. And I will see you next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Friend, I pray that this conversation with Scarlett was refreshing to your soul. Her honesty was refreshing to mine. And I'm so grateful to know that we are not alone in this weary world. Thank goodness that we have Jesus in one another. So make sure to grab a copy of Anxious. There's a link in the description below. And make sure to subscribe because we'll have a new episode of Faith and Friends next week. I love you very much and I'm so grateful for who you are. And take heart because Jesus overcame the world for you. I'll see you next time. Bye!